Dude, we're doing this. This is live, man. We are live. Oh my gosh, are I, we actually live? We are, are we, we starting we are live. soon or are we live? We are live now. We've gone to live. We listened to the fucking music. <laughs> gave that a it's shot. So just to, you know, I, yeah, I know. I was grooving. But anyhow, the reason why we're doing this live is, you know, we've done the podcast. We want to try something different. Hopefully get some, mm-hmm. you know, interaction with some viewers and stuff like that. But we'll see how things go. Um, later on, we're going to be talking about unpopular opinions. But first, just to get things settled, Soto, what have you been playing recently? Or what have you beaten recently? Oh my God! I what I haven't beaten much. I, I'm going to be 100% honest. Uh, you know, my PlayStation, you know, thing came out for last year. My recap, and um, so last year I played Mass Effect a lot. I, I played all three games. Obviously, I was a big fan of the Mass Effect series. But the second one, with like 95 hours, was actually Skyrim. And the 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 most fucked up part about that is I started playing Skyrim in November. <laughs> So <laughs> I started Skyrim on November 11th when the anniversary edition came out, and I are, it was already my second most played game. So, you know, as far as right now goes, I, I'm really in an in-between spot. I'm playing dumb shit like the golfing, you know, game that we got free from PS Plus. Um, for some reason, I cannot get myself to just beat Final Fantasy VII. I'm already at the last part. Uh, well, I feel like I'm at the last part because it said these are the last odd jobs or side quests that you have to do before, I guess, you enter the... The final building. warning, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, fuck. So now it's like I got a bunch of side quests to do, and I've got Tifa and Barrett, so I'm feeling pretty good about shit, but I was like, ugh. And then, so every time I try to sit down and play something, I just don't want to play anything that involves my brain. So that's why I'm playing the golf one. Um, and then yesterday, like I told you, I, I, I fucking bought Persona 5 Royal, for some reason, because I was, I'm reading about Persona 5 Strikers, and it sounds really cool, and it's free, and I got it on PS Plus. I'm really excited to play it. So what I did was, I bought a game that I already beat, <laughs> so that I could play that again. For some reason, knowing it's a 120-hour video game, play that again so I can play my free game. I'm not sure. So you know, to long story short. I am doing a bunch of different games. I'm in between shit. You got a lot um, on your you plate. Know, from streams. Yeah, it's Resident Evil's one I've got to finish, and that's obviously on stream. Um, I'm thinking I might do that on Friday night. More to come on that. We'll see. But, um, yeah, uh, a whole lot of nothing. A lot of playing, not a lot of completing. <laughs> yeah, no, my next game I'm going to get into is Persona 5 Strikers, since, you know, that was free. That is my next mm. I'm going to get into. I just beat Doctor Who Edge of Reality, which... I am a nerd. Oh I love God. the Doctor Who, but I, they can't make a good game. I'm sorry. It was glitchy. I was pissed. You know, they got 50 <laughs> years of lore of like, you know, doctors and bad guys and stories. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know, something always screws it up. Um, was it free? But no, I ended up, I know I, I got it like 50% off. I've been watching it for a oh, while. Nice. So, um, yeah. but you mentioned PS plus uh, today. They announced mm-hmm. the new ones. Um, yeah. Excited about one, the other two, give or take. You know, the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. I'm, I love the Borderlands. I can't wait for this, especially with the new game coming out. Um, mm-hmm. I will definitely probably yeah. get this. Um, UFC Four, we talked about a little bit. I'm not a UFC <laughs> fan, but I know me and you will get it just to beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's got Fight Night uh, vibes to it. I don't know why they won't re-release the Fight Night series. I know it's boxing, but. Um, I guess I'll get in the UFC if I can get into golf. Uh, You know, maybe I can create another fat character of myself uh, in (laughs) UFC as well and see how that goes. (laughs) And then uh, the last one's Planet Coaster, which looks like you just make your own roller coasters, which I'm not into those type of games. Again, I purchase every PS Plus game just because, you know, you never know. But odds are I'm never going to touch that one. So, no, my wife is going to be so ecstatic about that. Like, I can't. When she comes home, I'm going to be like, Planet Coaster, because I think she's one of those weird people that had that, like, crazy addiction to Roller Coaster Tycoon or whatever it was on PC. Yeah. Um, she would do shit like, you know, uh, drown people and, and make people wait, like, three hours in line for the bathroom and stuff. So um, <laughs> she's going to really love that game. But other than that, yeah, it was kind of whatever. Um, there was a funny tweet about it that I saw uh, from somebody saying, like, you know, this is this is Sony's master plan because – uh, Horizon is coming out this month, so they didn't want the games to be too good on on PS Plus. So, but yeah, I, I, I'll probably get you know I'll download all three, but most likely, 
you know, UFC, we'll see how, you know, a planet that, coaster goes. That, that's, that's it. Yeah. So before we get into the subject, yeah, we are um, obviously doing a live podcast. We need to put some title cards in the background. So throughout, you're going to see some promotional shit. You know, that's what we do. But you are going to see some weird stuff that, you know, just trivia is from us. Yeah, see Essential Gamer. <laughs> he agrees. Ketchup does not belong on hot dogs. But we're not going to get into that. That's not what we're at. Oh, you think... You know yeah, what? We, we're think not he, having this he, discussion. I think he's feeling, yeah, I think he's feeling like it should go on hot dogs. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's the Chicago way. I'm sorry. But yes, that's why you're going to see some, you know, trivia cards. You are going to see some, you know, promotion like right here, streaming Saturday with Mel Madness. We are doing Party Panic. But let's get to the point. Um, unpopular <laughs> opinions. We've seen it across social media. We've seen, yeah. you know, people say this, especially in gaming, movies, mm-hmm. and it got me thinking, what is one of mine and ours, you know, unpopular opinions? And we discussed this beforehand, and I'm going to go first because I feel like I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. E.T. for the Atari 2600 is actually a good game for its time. For its time, because mind you, a lot of those games. It's not this horrible piece of shit that people put it out to be. I'm not saying it's a great game, but it's right. actually a good... Did you ever have... Did you play it? Did you actually play it? Let me ask you this. I, I never played the E.T. game, no. Like Atari, uh, you know, that was... The stuff I played in Atari was like, you know, I don't know, the Mario one, where Donkey Kong, you have to go up the fucking ladders and shit like that. Um, and so I was at the mercy of what my, my mom and my uncle are usually playing on that. So, but we never came across to E.T. I'm not sure why. Maybe my parents just didn't feel like that was a cool game to play. I'm not sure. So, so I know the game came out in 82, and for those who don't know, it was... Yeah, they had to make it in five weeks, you know, so they were trying to tie it in with the movie. Yeah, in 1982. Um, so they mm-hmm. gave it to this one developer. So, yes, five weeks to make a game, even on the Atari days, is hard. But this guy took it, and he did the best he could. He actually took it to Spielberg. Spielberg saw pretty much the game, I think, a week before release. And Spielberg's yeah. exact words were, can you make it more like Pac-Man? And <laughs> the guy's like, well, he was trying to do something different, and Pac- Pac-Man on the 2600 sucked. It was glitchy, it, yeah. you know, every everything. Glitchy. But it was. Like, your character was flashing. Like, it was just a horrible port to the 2600. Mm-hmm. 7800. And, yeah, I won't get into that, but... Anyhow, so it came out in 82. I I don't know my exact age when I actually came across this game and played it, but I know where I was living. So I'm going to round in the middle and say I was either 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old, when I actually started playing this game. Now, wow. that's like 88, 89. So obviously Nintendo's already out. I didn't have a Nintendo system. I had all the Atari systems. That's just the way my parents went. Mm-hmm. But finally I got around You know, a lot of the Atari games I think we've discussed points high score this and that et had an ending there was a there was a point to the whole game you had a story um from you know start to you know beginning you know you basically had to find like the pieces of your ship and then you know okay. basically if i you know um get to a certain part you call your ship and they come and rescue you it was random so all your pieces are in these holes and i think you've heard about the infamous holes mm-hmm. you know yeah, so they're never in the same spot twice. So anytime you played this game, you know, it was always something different. You couldn't just, you know, speed run it. So there's, I love that because it was never the same thing twice. And yes, if you're a four or five year old, which, you know, kind of was the demographic at the time, if you think about ET, you know, the game, what they're trying to <laughs> right. do. This game was actually complicated because there's certain times where you had to, when you ever fall in the hole and you basically raise your head to lift yourself up. You know, you, you lose health. It's like you have nine, 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 and as the game, you have to finish all this before your everything goes down to zero. You got people chasing you, this and that. So you you had to learn how to do certain things, like certain parts as far as when to lift your head, when to find these. You know, it was just I, I I'm gonna say brilliant. You know, it was just different for the Atari days, especially for the 2600. Now, granted, Thank God, it sounds frustrating. Yeah. It, well, it can be, and I think the one only frustrating part is like when you <laughs> got yourself out of a hole. If you're on like the tip, like the side where the black hole is, you fall back in. And that's, I get where people get frustration. But you know what? Games have problems, this and that, all the time. You find a way to route it. You go left, right. Don't go like up above the hole or below the hole. Yeah. I know people had, you know, and I, the infamous landfill because yeah, the yeah. company made 
and I know this is a rumor, but the company made more copies of this game than they had Atari 2600 sold. I'm sorry, that is a bad business pra- practice, and I know that. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> terrible. So that, but that has nothing to do with the game. You know, <laughs> that's not the game's fault. Again, five weeks. You know, and yes, I know it was. It was a little bit different. It wasn't, you know, like Pac, like you said, Donkey Kong, Pac Man. I can't. El Pitfall was a huge game at that time because I think a lot of mm-hmm. kids were trying this and they just yeah, weren't having yeah. fun. But again, I think. It had to be a little bit older because you had to understand how to do this. You know, you were just running around as ET, um, and the guys, the FBI agents that chased you, were scared as shit. You know, <laughs> when they came, when they came out, I was just like, oh my god. But you know, in the long run, I've I've been in it quite a few times. Now, would I go back and play it today? Yeah, but like most Atari games, after five ten minutes, even if me and you play it. We're done. Yeah, I don't care what the I'm Atari sure. game is, whether it's Centipede, Millipede, Pitfall, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> all that shit. Yes, they're good games, but at the same time, after and that's just the way the Atari was. But E.T. actually was a good game. It just it took a little wow. bit to understand. You know, there was actually something to it. And I think, again, for that time period, because everyone was thinking high scores, you know, points, and, you know, how what level mm-hmm. you get to. I'm like, they didn't take the time to learn how to actually play this game. And, you know, kids are like, well, fuck this game. And they're just tossing it aside or, you know, putting it in a landfill out there in Nevada where they actually did find like 13,000. I don't know the exact number, but they found cartridges out there. So they prove that that was true. And I find that totally oh amazing. God. But yeah, no, I mean, to me, that's my unpopular opinion. When people say E.T. was a hard, one of the worst games, I'm like, no, no, no. E.T. was a good game. Yes, they did bad business by making, you know, more copies than Atari sold. That's a stupid thing to do. Um, they gave it only it five no weeks. Sense. But um, I, I enjoyed it. I loved playing that, you know. And yes, I grew up and then got the Genesis and, you know, played better games. But again, for the Atari, for what it was at the time, you know, E.T. was actually a good game. And I loved it, you know. And I have fond memories as, you know, a young kid. I don't. I wasn't like four or five. I was four when the game came out, but by the time I actually got my hands on it, somehow I was like nine or ten. So a little bit older. I understood how yeah. games work. I wasn't just trying to, you know, shoot things like asteroids or something like that. So. Well, my question for you about ET is this, right? So you're a kid, you know, you're doing your thing. Like, how did you know what the objective was? Like, how did you like piece together that you had to find all these pieces? And everything, and then also that there was going to be a ship that was waiting for you. Like, okay, well, how did first you of... conceptualize this from really okay. what is just like a few pixels? We're going to get to the chat in a second because I see a few good questions coming out of there. Um, it's something <laughs> that we don't see nowadays that collectors like the Essential Gamer, because I seen his latest video. It's called an instruction manual, and it has. <laughs> Tells you oh, what to do. And I've, I've given you some <laughs> shit about that one. But, you know, you don't go online. So, yes. And then I I think I just learned and like, okay, I think there's like a, it's a bullseye symbol. You have to be in the right spot. So, yeah, no, they had it laid out. Um, okay. I just think, you know, like us. So there like was some previous game, literature. Yes, that there, there's, came there's the game, literature. Like, well, like most, back in the I, day. Yes, literature <laughs> came. I love the instruction books. I love the cover art. But, but you know, not many people, you know, collect that stuff nowadays but yeah so there i i somehow knew and i don't know maybe just by messing around i figured out a couple things um you know like tricks and stuff like that because like i said the worst part was you're being chased by a scientist who takes away i think your um pieces or the fbi i don't know exactly which one did which but when they came out you're freaking out and you're just running that's what the worst part is because you fall in a hole you're like fuck but yeah no i figured it out like i said i've (laughs) been in the quite a few times in the manual itself it's like here's the exposition (laughs) Here's what you need. Now go forth but, and find this and get ET home. But that's you're the like, thing. Yes. But that's the thing. Atari. <laughs> well, 2600. You know, I had the 70. I think I was playing this on the 7800, which had two buttons. But when the game came out, one button. So it's not like it was hard to figure it out. But you just had to put yourself in the right space. And you know, you, and they tell you find your missing pieces. Once you find the hole, you touch it, you got it. And they, I think it was three or four pieces. I don't know the overall number. But it was, I, I liked it. You know, it was, yeah, it could have been better. Yeah, most games for the Atari. And I don't know a worse game. There's a bunch of shit that I played on Atari. I, I'm going to sidetrack a little bit. There's a game I had to have my parents buy, and it was a skateboarding game. And it complete, that's yeah. when I learned, like, to learn reviews. All you did in that game was go off six ramps, and you had to do it in two minutes. So if two minutes you didn't do it, that's it. Like, game over. I'm like, this is, this is the worst game. So there was a lot of trash on the Atari. 
BT, like I said, was it a great game? No. Was it the worst game? Definitely not. It was actually a good game because you had to think, you had to do things correctly. You just can't run around, you know, eating Reese's Pieces and be happy. But Yeah, I think that we're going to have to, before we get into the chat, uh, I think we're going to have to dedicate some time on a future episode on why does Chad hate himself when he plays video games? Like, <laughs> Echo the Dolphin. I now love this Echo ET the Dolphin. Debacle. Like, uh, you know, and, and we can explore. I don't know what else is in your closet of just hating yourself. And, and you know, we all, I have this too, but, you know, we're going to have to talk about what, why you, you don't like having fun in, in games or what your background was. So anyways, with that said, we'll go ahead and take a break and look into the chats, but so, I'm horrified. Yeah, no, Lee, first of all, uh, yeah, I don't know how many copies they found. I heard 13,000 or I don't know. I've heard different numbers. Um, yeah. But as you being a, um, you know, collector, Lee, I, you know, and I've seen your latest video, the arcade, and you know, I know you collect a lot of stuff. Yeah, a manual. A man, it's just something simple, and it's something I miss. I remember just going through and just reading it. You know, they had, like, Legend of Zelda had, you know, so much stuff in it, and you're like, oh, agree, this is great. And nowadays, it's just like, you know, you get quick, you know, quick instructions, like, or the tutorial. That That's your, like, instruction booklet, but... I, yeah. I do miss it. I do miss it. <laughs> the boxes I are it too. Out. It was, it was, I, you know, and, and I, I remember manuals as well, obviously. And it was a nice like thing to do in between, you know, gaming. I think now my manuals is either I watch a video or I look up shit, uh, like in a game facts for, for a game or anything like that. But I like to, you know, I don't like to fuck around. I like to just get into a game and, and just start playing it. I don't know, maybe because I'm older now. <laughs> yeah. So that is one of my gaming unpopular opinions. What is one of your Soto? Tell me what what's one of your well, popular things for you. Real quick though, because and, and we could talk about this the next time we check on chat, but you're gonna have to explain this whole Simpsons shit uh, <laughs> that you've never seen the Simpsons. Because... I've never seen an episode. Never seen a that, whole, never seen. I've seen like bits, wild. but I've never seen a full ep. Let me. I'm gonna just clarify. I've never seen an episode from start to beginning. I have caught like you know little clips. Um, I, and I remember seeing the ending of the infamous Maggie says her word or you know first word or something like that. Yeah. And I, but I I've not ever gotten in Simpsons, nor do I care. You know. <laughs> so yes, That's I've such been. a weird like so, gap in your pop culture like knowledge. It's so strange. I know, and yet you know it is what it is. But yeah, I've never watched a single episode in there. Whatever, thirty-five seasons, blah blah blah. I do watch South Park. I do watch Family Guy. I just I've never watched The Simpsons, and I just Which don't are know the children of it. I mean, fucking I, like correct. South Park has you know, Simpsons did it for God's oh, yeah. sakes. Like oh, Simpsons yeah. did it for because they typically do. Yeah, no, it, it is brilliant, and from what I've you know heard of it, but. I think when it was popular, I wasn't watching a lot of TV. I think, I don't know if it's because of yeah. high school and doing other things. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, no, I've never watched an episode of The Simpsons. And I'm proud to say that. <laughs> well, it, it, I get the popular thing because, like, you know, it's it sometimes, like, just where we are in our lives um, can create that gap, right? Just kind of like what you're dealing with and what's going on. And everybody else is onto something and you're not. And so, um, you know, transition to what we are talking about, uh, popular opinions and going to Call of Duty I just never, when Call of Duty first came out, you know, I think I was, if I had played Call of Duty was, I don't even know which one it was on. It's probably Modern Warfare, but there's a one where it starts off, it's an obstacle course, and you talk to this guy named Soap, I think, and, you know, you get into it. And I just never had that intro to, like, actually getting into it. And I think a lot of things that we play sometimes... Yeah, it's really kind of like what your friends are playing at the time. Um, I think I just never had a social group that was playing Call of Duty or anything like that. I mean, my social group was playing RPGs, um, you know, your Final Fantasy VIII. Um, and then obviously Final Fantasy X was a big one I played in college. Um, yeah. I'm playing these really kind of single player campaigns and everything. And, you know, I just you get to a point with something that's popular like Call of Duty where it's like, you know, you just at what point are you too far behind to jump into something that people have been playing literally for years <laughs> i have the same kind of thing for madden too like i used to have friends that could play madden one-handed while eating a sandwich and you know they're like the most ridiculous madden players you've ever seen i know you've played with these people too and so you know as i got older is it appealing for me to jump into a game that i'm just going to basically just get my ass kicked over and over again. Fortnite is the same thing, and now I'm going to come across like a fucking older gamer, which is fine. It's what I am, and I own it. 
But like, you know, you get to these fads and you get to these waves, and I just at, at some point I'm like, well, I never got onto the first stop, so you know, I'm just not going to play now? it. And, why get on now? Like, you know, and, and we used to have a guy that worked with us in our past. I don't know if you remember him, uh, Dave uh, Wilson, who at the time, uh, I think we, he was managing a store in Gloucester. And uh, he would talk about playing Call of Duty all the time, even back then. And I'm like, you know, it's all he would do. And I'm like, ugh, I don't. I, and I get it. Like, there is like a kind of a thing that goes with it as far as getting experience and getting better weapons. So there are kind of RPG aspects to it. But. I just never got into it, and, and and as far as you know, the overall interface of Call of Duty, like first-person shooters to me, or first-person views, with a few rare exceptions, um, are just not anything I get into. Really, coming from like a mindset where it's like I don't feel comfortable in the space that I am in the game world when I'm playing in first-person, like. You know, obviously, I'm playing Resident Evil uh, 7 and Resident, Resident Evil 8 or Village. And that's kind of like what adds the horror aspect is I, I don't have a concept of where I am in the game world, if that makes sense. Like Resident Evil 4 to me is not scary because you're seeing Leon, because you can see where you're at. And it's a lot more action oriented and it's cool. Um, the first the first few Resident Evils were scary because you had um, the shitty camera angles. And so you think you're running away with from tank something controls, and you're already yeah. with tank controls and then you're going the wrong way and th so your controls become inverted and so you end up having a panic attack. But you know, as far as Call of Duty and first person, I just never – first person shooters to me just do not – there's no attraction there. Um, you know, Skyrim I play obviously as a first person game. That's a lot more relaxed, but I just never feel like a sense of where my character is in the game world, how I take damage – I certainly don't feel that as much as I would in a third-person game, if that makes sense. No, it does. And I will admit, I'm not a huge Call of Duty. I play Warzone more now just to play with some friends. Yeah. But when I got my PlayStation 3, I had two games to choose from because I only had enough money to buy one game. And it was uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which now they just you call Modern Warfare, I believe. But anyhow, that or Assassin's Creed. And I'm looking at these two yeah. games, and I know the reviews, and I'm like... I want to start playing online. I want to give the shot. I've never played a campaign in that game. I I just went straight to multiplayer. Like you said, it, it is it is overwhelming at first. And I do remember Dave. I actually played like with him and his group for a, a few weeks. I he would just invite yeah. me, and it was crazy. But I can see it. You know, like I said, I I think I've gotten a more of an understanding now. But yeah, then I'm like, no, I'm done with Call of Duty, and then. I think Black Ops 4 came out, and I started playing with friends, Warzone, and stuff like that. But I, yeah, yeah War, Call of Duty and Madden. I love, I love Madden at first when Madden Arcade came out. I was in the top three, and then all of a sudden, just everyone just got really good, and I'm like, it's too overwhelming. Yeah. I just want to throw the football and hit people. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time to sit around and play a game like Call of Duty or Fortnite to a point. No, Fortnite where sucks. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, okay, well, that might be an unpopular opinion because, like, you know, that is something else entirely. But, you know, I don't have the time to get good at it. Like, you know, people say get good and all this shit and whatever. Um, you know, just get better at shit. I don't have the time. Like, I don't have the time to sit there and play 12 hours or anything like that. It's like I've got a, I've got a job. I have a wife. Like, I'm trying to balance my lifestyle. It's like, you know, I'm not trying to get fucking good at fucking Call of Duty, like, at 40 years old. For what? It's no, only going to uh, negatively impact my relationships that I have <laughs> in my life. That's not exactly what I'm trying to do. Like, yes, I'm about to play Persona 5 Royale again, or Royal again. I keep calling it Royale, clearly. Paul I mentioned. do it, too. I do it, too. Uh, <laughs> it's a, a Persona 5 Royale with cheese. I'm about to play that for 120 hours. But I yep. can fit that in. And I'm not playing against anybody. And it's got, you know, when my wife is at work and I've got time, I can play it for an hour here, too. But I can't sit here and get good at games like destiny or call of duty or whatever the fuck it is first person shooters i'm sorry it's not in my mental like capacity to get into that much unless it's skyrim and i'm summoning you know daedra demons to fight other people for me i don't even get that involved with in that that's that's wonky as well but that's my unpopular opinion but i think that's just because you know like you said with the simpsons it just hits you in a part of your life where you never got on the train, and you just at don't this want to point, get on the, the train's train. already gone, <laughs> like and it's like fuck it. Like you with the Simpsons, you're like, well, at this point, 
I'm not I going to care. binge 300 <laughs> episodes of The Simpsons. Like, nope. There are other things I want to do with myself. You know what I mean? So, going to the chat, uh, first of all, uh, hi, Taj. Um, yes, hey, Taj. he does not like first-person shooters. I know you're a huge first-person shooter. Second, I agree but with that's Lee. that's a personal <laughs> problem for me. I want to be very clear. I, if you like first-person games, that's on you. Great. Have at it. I'm sure you're owning people. That's fine. But I cannot handle it. That, that is just my thing. That is just my opinion. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm sure it's got its whole entire thing. But for me personally... I can't do it. Call me Old Man Jenkins. That's me. Another day. Lee said something a few chats back, um, and I actually – I've never played a Pokemon game. So I don't get not it. Not even I don't a Game Boy? I'm not, not a single Pokemon game. It's I'm an not, RPG. I don't Pokemon. care. I've not played one. <laughs> I'm not a Pokemon, Pokemon, whatever the fuck it is. Pokemon. I'm not going to catch them all. I don't want to catch them all. I don't get the craze. I honestly don't. So, yes, oh. I've never. Pokemon. Got to catch them all. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Um, this is coming across like an old man podcast. Like, well, we are, are old. We're old in our man. 40s. There's a lot of old man <laughs> opinions being like, I don't play these first person shooters back in my day. <laughs> we needed an instruction manual so they had to play. I we didn't instruction have instruction manual for Zelda. <laughs> and then I'd play it until I was tired and sleepy. <laughs> That was, oh, that's me. basically been our podcast. <laughs> that, 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 Holy well, shit. We're, we're just old men bitching. You know, I mean, I think that's our bitching chat too right now. Bitching about the lawn, man. Holy shit. Well, you know what? This has been very eye-opening for me as a personal journey just in these last few minutes. Because uh, now I'm like, oh my god. The world has gone by me. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so before we get into the movie aspect of this, I saw a trivia that I got to ask you. If pushed, sure. do you really think you can eat a hundred fucking pieces of shrimp? <laughs> Easily. You could do more. I bet you could. I don't know if you like shrimp or not. You and I don't I like shrimp. You know, shrimp's one of those things that I can eat a few. I just can't eat a lot. I, I'm not. I mean, we've done um, hibachi, and we, I know we both love shrimp, but but a hundred friggin' pieces. Easily. Now, I've done 50 chicken nuggets, okay? And so Jesus. I know from Wendy's, Okay. <laughs> So that was like about a $20 situation, and um, I've done 50 chicken nuggets, and that's – oh, man. That was when I was younger and, and much skinnier. But now it's like if pressed, like if I was hungry, I mean shrimp go down so easily, man. I, 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 you know what? Not I, I guess. Shrimp. Well, like, you know what right. I mean? Like a shrimp cocktail. Like a shrimp cocktail, right? Like where they're like whatever and you're dipping them and shit. All right, I guess it depends on the, the size, off. you know, because I know there's like the small – I don't know. It's just it's just eating a hundred of anything outside of like pieces no, of rice. No, my sister can believe like... it, yeah. My sister's <laughs> chatting in I right can now. believe it's it. Like, I just can... – it's not about yeah. him doing it. It's just eating a hundred shrimp. I'm like – and this is gonna, it's gonna come out as a bad dad joke, but that just seems Easily. fishy. It's just too much fish. <laughs> it's 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 shellfish. It's it's more like a bug. You know what I mean? Like, but I love shrimp. If I'm somewhere, I'm getting shrimp. I'm eating shrimp. Even I'll even go ahead and, and say this. We have a obviously our local grocer here is Market Basket. I will go into Market Basket and grab those two like shrimp cocktail things, like a lemon or some shit like that. I will live off of that shit. I like to me, I say 100 because 50 is way too easy. I would destroy 50, <laughs> right? But and I've talked about this with my wife. Do I have a limit when it comes to shrimp overall? I don't think so. And you know what? One day, and maybe this summer, you know, when we're up north and we're talking about shit and we're going and seeing fun spot and everything. Maybe the opportunity will rise and, and we'll make a situation about it, but I, I really fucking think I can. Oh, fuck. This is something I don't know if I want to find I think out, I can. but I know, I know we can find You're out. You're going to find out. Dude, you and I put that place, <laughs> we went to like, okay, to an all you can eat like meat place. That's but meat. That's, that's, that's cow. like a slice of steak. It's, I know. But not, uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's they just, brought it's out just, beef ribs. are shrimp. huge. But it's shrimp. Oh, it's just, oh my it's God, just dude. Too much. I'm telling you, I think I can do it. Well, right. again, to be continued, that will be we'll in the future, that. but that that's that's that. So anyhow, we did put up on our Twitter um, asking people their unpopular opinion something. Mm -hmm. And I know we had a tweet just um, pop up. And Mel, Melly Playful, responded how she thinks the Star Wars movies are overrated. Even Clunch and Duke came in saying they've, they're outdated, which... I don't think that – I get some people – kind of like your Call of Duty. Some people might love it. Some people might hate it. Which Star Wars movies? The prequels? All Star Wars. She doesn't – All Star Wars. Ones? She's talking about the original. Star Wars. I'm, so let's, screw the prequels and the sequels. The original yeah. three she thinks is overrated. And they are. Duke, they are you a know, little bit. Yeah, I agree with her Well, it depends. And then um, 
like Madness said, you know, the prequels he, are he, shit. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> Well, that's yeah, my opinion. yeah, yeah. That that that's not, not a popular, unpopular. That's a popular the, opinion. The prequels no, are that's shit. a popular opinion. But anyhow, and like, Madness thought Avatar was not that good. But movie wise, it's long. And you told me one of yours that I need you to start talking about because this one actually yeah. is kind of surprised me a little bit. What, so, what is your unpopular <laughs> movie opinion? I mean, I I think that I don't get why the Dark Knight trilogy uh, is. I, I, from what I hear and what I imagine, it's like actually beloved by people. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's not 100% trash. And I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy the Dark Knight movies uh, because, you know, they were okay. Um, but I don't see what the big deal is at all. And I don't know, and maybe somebody can tell me as far as what they think a Batman is supposed to be like, but I think Christian Bale's fucking choices that he made as batman are absolute trash you have heath ledger who obviously won his his oscar for joker which i I, i'm gonna throw out there i think he only got because he passed away i'm gonna throw it out there he only got that because of that sorry savage but it's true so anyhow it's true come on but anyhow continue i'm sorry i'm sorry no no (laughs) that's perfectly fine but you know feel free to interrupt because i just think that his voice is ridiculous, man. Like, the choice he makes as Batman, make, it's like, it takes me out of the whole thing completely. Like, I don't mind, it's well shot. Christopher Nolan, obviously, I think is a great director, but like, I cannot, when I hear Christian Bale trying to do the stupid shit that Christian Bale does, okay, then it takes me out of it. And I hearken back to another Christian Bale legendary movie, which most people are like, that movie is trash, uh, is a movie called Equilibrium which he is so bad in. And it is like one of those so bad that it's good ones. I mean, Sean Bean is in it and he looks like he's just like, somebody please get me the fuck off this movie set. Um, (laughs) There's like a scene where like, I'm sorry, spoiler alert. If you're going to go see Equilibrium, go see it. Make sure you're drunk or high. Uh, They're not supposed to feel emotions. And so there's one scene where like, he gets a fucking dog, like a puppy thrown at him. And he has to hold the puppy. And like, that's the moment he decides that he's going to say, fuck it. I'm going to kill everybody because I have emotions. (laughs) And it's just awful. And then Christian Bale, like in, I actually like him in a lot of stuff. But Batman was just so bad. And it's like, what is a good Batman movie? I don't know. I mean, it's not Val Kilmer and fucking George Jim Clooney. Carrey. Or yeah. whatever, George Clooney. I don't even remember the George Clooney one. That was Batman and Robin. I think that movie was awful, too. It uh, was. Uma Thurman was in that yep. shit. Po- but Poison Ivy, yep. So, I don't see what the big deal is with the Batman Dark Knight trilogy. I don't know why people love so, it so much. I just think it's kind of mediocre. That's all. Is it mainly because – now, I know you weren't – and a lot of people said that about Christian Bale as far as the way he talked and, you know, whispered and blah, blah, blah. I guess I can get that, but was it just that? Was it like the story? Because obviously – Whisper? Don't get me wrong. I, I, that wasn't I, a whisper. That was like a growling stupid shit. <laughs> But, um, oh my god, it's so bad. The growling is the worst, man. And Heath Ledger was great in Joker. You know, I mean, in my opinion, I I know I said that about the Oscar, which I do kind of believe because not many superhero movies get or you know what I mean those kind of Oscars. Yeah. But you know, so is do you think did you not like the stories? Did you not like the villains? I mean, I know you do not like Christian Bale as Batman, but you know, was it just that? What I else? I mean. Was it? Like, I, I enjoyed Tom Hardy being in it because I enjoy Tom Hardy in everything that he does practically. Um, but then again, they covered Tom Hardy's fucking face. Like, I think it, that's the third one, right? He's banned. Yes, yeah, Dark Knight Rises. Um, yeah, so it, he, it, I, that one was okay. Dark Knight Rises, I think, was okay. I just, every time Christian Bale shows up on screen, man, I'm like, fuck this guy. <laughs> You know, and that just takes me out of it. I'm not saying, you know, I prefer fucking Ben Affleck because I don't uh, as Batman. I have no problem with Ben Affleck. I just think he sucks as Batman, too. So, um, no, it's just that's just my whole thing. I did not buy the Blu-ray set with the fucking Batmobile like tank thing that has that's going on. I didn't do that shit. And I don't simp for it. It's pretty simple. No, look at the chat. You you have a couple, you know, someone didn't like Heath Ledger, but he thought he was awesome as the Joker. Yeah, Christian Bale was great. I did like American Psycho as well. Um, I thought American that was Psycho's really good. American Psycho's good. Um, but, you know, uh, Equilibrium, that is a laugh fest from the beginning to the end. Uh, Lee thought it was great ridiculous there. Ridiculous <laughs> movie. Uh, that is, 
that is a fucking phenomenal movie. And poor Sean Bean. He dies in literally everything that he's in. Yeah, that's become All the right, running joke alert. of everything. <laughs> yeah, if you see a movie with Sean Bean, he's dying, you know, halfway through it or, you know, sacrificing himself oh, and stuff like that. it sucks, man. It, it, it really, really does suck. So, yeah, that's my hot take with Dark Knight Trilogy. Um, it's really just centered around a very, very small thing. And also, that they're fucking long. Oh, I'm sorry. And again, this is, is old man podcast over here, but I got well, shit to do, man. I'm just short. <laughs> You like, like, got time for a two and a half hour movie for fucking yeah. It's like holy god, I got to drive to the movie theater. Yeah, people are gonna be like, uh, Soto's ninety five years old. <laughs> All those yeah, movies I... are gonna be twenty five minutes, so he can go. He can have a restroom break. I know everyone loves Michael Keaton as Batman. You know that seems to be especially our age group we can go yeah. to. But uh, like you said, yeah. it's hard because. I, I didn't love him. It was okay. I think the villains were better in the, his movies because he had like, Jack Nicholson as Joker, you know, Danny DeVito as Penguin. He, I, I wasn't a big fan yeah. of him as Batman. I'm not saying he was bad. He just wasn't great. But I don't think there's been a great Batman. Ben Affleck, I agree, is not a good Batman. But I will say Ben Affleck makes a good Bruce Wayne. Uh, that, you know, but you need to have both characters. Don't get me wrong. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. Now fucking I, Robert Pattinson is fucking... In oh, this I... new fucking Batman movie, and that's supposed to be three fucking hours. Like, every time they're like, oh, it's going to be three plus hours. I'm like, checking out. <laughs> checking out of that shit. I don't have no interest in watching him fuck around or reimagine Riddler or whatever the fuck he's doing. I, I don't know. I, I don't know the story of the new Batman. I just heard he was playing Batman. That's about it. Um, yeah, I know. I agree with you. There has not been a DC comic movie that's actually been great. Not that I can no, think of. No, I will offhand. say I liked I liked the new Suicide Squads. It did make me laugh, like the one with John Cena. Um, you know, I, I don't know if if you've seen that, Jacenic, but like the new Suicide Squad, I actually didn't think it was that bad. Um, I didn't think it was great either. Like it's one of those ones you watch, uh, I think once. But I, I actually didn't mind that one strictly because I think John Cena is hilarious uh and for what it was it was okay um you know it's directed by james gunn who does uh the guardians of the galaxy movies which i'm a huge fan of um so i didn't think it was that bad but like as far as batmans go and and, and again i'm gonna go ahead and say this too like uh, i i have not seen the Zack snyder cut of justice league because dun dun dun, dun it's like four fucking hours long <laughs> Okay. Uh, I got shit to do. Even if the shit I do is nothing else, it's still better than sitting through that fucking garbage. Like, get your story across. Hour and a half, two hours, just like it was back in the day. I get to it. the Old point. man on the lawn. <laughs> All right. Well, going to, I guess, an unpopular opinion for me, movie-wise, um, little backstory. I just binge watched a couple weeks ago cobra kai I, i've been loving cobra kai it's oh been bringing God, me back so good i know it's a little nostalgic i think they've been doing things right so good I, I so and it got me thinking now a i saw karate kid 2 before one i think so a friend took me to the theaters you know i'm like do i need to see one before two and he's like i don't think so and they did the good recap blah 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 but you know thinking back about all you know the karate kid movies and i will say this karate kid part two is miles better and above the first Karate Kid. I'm not saying the first one wasn't bad, but two was the best out of all the Karate Kid movies. And I think it's because it has my first real film crush. You know, Kumiko, she was just, you know, amazing. I, I loved her as a kid. I just saw, you know, I think you mentioned the tea party scene. It's just great. I think the Chosen is oh. just such a fucking badass. Like, I think he would just rip apart so Johnny Lawrence. But, you know, everyone says, like, the first one's great. I'm like, I just don't think the chemistry was there between Daniel and um, Allie with a Y. You know, she's a good strong character, you know, strong female character but they just, I don't know. To Are you me, shitting never on Elizabeth Shue? Is that what you're doing? I'm right not now? shitting on Elizabeth Shue. She did the part as best as she can but her and Macho just, there was not chemistry between those two. But between him and I don't know the actress name who played Kumiko you <laughs> felt they were in love. And you know when she returned in season 3, I was so I mean I knew she was coming now. I was so happy. I'm like, oh my god, you know, you were my first film and I, I loved it but I, I think the second one is miles ahead of the first one. You know, I oh, the first. I agree one hundred percent. And I think the first one, and 
it's the same reason that like movies like Meet the Parents I don't like. It's the same thing over and over. Like you know, Meet the Parents, same joke over and over. You know, how many times can Daniel get bullied over and over? I'm like, give me something new. You know, I, that's why I have problems with some movies when they just do the same thing. So the first one, it was okay. Like I said, I do enjoy it. I have watched it again, but two, I will sit anytime it's on. I will watch it until the end. Um, but yeah, to me, that was a far superior movie. And I love Chosen. I thought, like I said, he just could break anyone. Like, I feared him. You know, you feared for Daniel's life. You know, this is not tournament. This for real. You know, you're like, oh, shit, Daniel could die. Now, obviously, you know, when you're whatever, <laughs> eight or nine, you're like, my God, he yeah. could die? This for real? But, oh. you know, you know that doesn't happen, you know, these kind of movies. But still, Chosen yeah. was such a better villain. That's why I can't wait till they bring Mike Barnes, because he was such a badass, too. Karate's but... bad boy, Mike. <laughs> Mike Barnes, which I just kept saying over and over again while I was watching Cobra Kai and Sarah was like, will you shut the fuck up about saying Karate's bad boy, Mike Barnes? Like anytime there was like anything mysterious, I'd be like, I guarantee Karate's bad boy, Mike Barnes. I won't say anything more than that, but that was, I'm looking so, forward to it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a question here because Taj wants me to ask you a question. What did you think about the Lord of the Rings? I fucking love Lord of the Rings. And I will only watch the Lord of the Rings extended editions. That's uh, and I have. Isn't that like I, three hours long? <laughs> three, three and a half. It's a journey, Chad. Okay, <laughs> it's a fucking journey of friendship, and love, camaraderie, and just awesomeness. Uh, so, like, yes, okay. I, I've just spent this whole time saying, like, get on with it. But like, I, and I have seen all three uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Um, so I, and they are great. Don't get me wrong. They are day, great. I'm enjoying. By the way, it. extended editions in one day. Okay, <laughs> I've done this with my sister. I've done it. It's one of those things that comes on, and I think they re recently came out on HBO Max, and randomly, it was like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, I'm fucking watching the extended edition of Fellowship of the Ring. I'm gonna do this right now. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just stop at like midnight, you know, and just kind of take a break, and I'll finish the rest. No, I watched it all the way through. I love the Lord of the Rings. I think they're fantastic. On the other side of that, I find the three Hobbit movies to be atrocious and not part of my viewing experience. Lo those are like long and just dumb. And I like Martin Freeman a lot too. But the Hobbit movies are fucking terrible. Lord of the Rings, 100%. I will do it all day, every day. I just went through all three. Uh, and it's just like, it's, it's a magical journey, Chad. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I actually agree with you. The Lord of the Rings is a great trilogy. I've not seen any of those movies in God knows how many years. I mean, um, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just saw that question in chat, so I figured I'd throw it out there, especially since you're talking about length of movies. So I will give you shit. But, you know, <laughs> you're about three, two, and a, two, two and a half hours. You're like, let me watch this three, four hour extended edition. But you're right. It is a journey. It is really good. Um, I did enjoy it. The stuff just they add in is the stuff they add in is is good like most director cuts that you watch are like oh my god why um but the stuff that they add into the extended edition is absolutely fantastic and it adds so much more to the story and yes it's an exception of being like i mean it's if it's good let it be long if it's like boring and and whatever then fine like the avengers movies i can tolerate being three hours it's experience and i've seen them in imax and okay yay but it, it's it doesn't have that replayability that Lord of the Rings does for me. So call me a fantasy nerd, but... No, we so, both are. And I, I, I 100%, I'm not disagreeing with you in this one. I just didn't dawn on me until Taj brought it up and you were talking about like long movies, this and that. But yeah, no, no it's, it's fine. No, it's I'll, I'll do it for Lord of the Rings. You've got to find the one you love and, uh, and stick with it. But uh, most of the movies these days and like, you know, the whole thing that happened with Dying Light 2 where... Uh, the publishers or whatever, the developers are like, this game's 500 hours. And people are like, I don't want to play a game. That's 500 hours. Like, that's actually makes me not want to play it. You know, how, how much of that is fluff? Assassin's Creed Valhalla is one of these uh, games that it's like, I think I played it for 172 hours. A lot of that was side quest shit and collecting stuff. And the story itself was like only 30 hours. So it gets to a point where you're like, why am I doing this? So... Those have been our unpopular opinions. Um, I know we can go through a ton more. Uh, God, we yeah. do got a few minutes left, so I, I, I want to talk about some of this trivia that's come up. I know we talked about the shrimp, and you asked me about the Simpsons. Lee asked me about the ketchup. And <laughs> th this isn't a questionable one. I just, I'm just, since I talked about, you know, my childhood crush, Kumiko, and stuff like that, that, oh. I, that is my first, you know, know. 
you love cinematography. Your, so good. You, you mentioned that your movie crush is Jennifer Connelly. Oh my god. So yeah. What was it about Labyrinth that just made you fall in love? Well, for lack of better terms, fall you know made her your oh movie crush. Oh my god. Crush. How much time do I have left? Uh, this is gonna get real personal real quick. <laughs> All right. Um, like I could say, look, I will say that it was like love at first sight uh, with Jennifer Connelly. Strictly, I was obviously younger. She's older. And, uh, oh, my God, this is going to be bad. But she just had that kind of babysitter vibe, man. And, uh, like, at six, seven years old, I was like, yeah, I love my babysitters. This is great. And uh, it's, that's what did it for me, man. And, again, I could go on for another hour, but I know we're crunched for time. But holy shit, yeah. And that's we got a few minutes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not like, oh, my God, she's so hot. And no, I know, for I know. A dream, which is one of the saddest, worst movies I've ever seen. I mean, it's not bad. It's just terrible um, yeah but uh there's that one movie that she's like in target overnight what is that career opportunities i know my sister's gonna call me out on that but uh career opportunities is a great movie i don't know if you've seen that actually i'm um, not I, that one thank you <laughs> we're both of the same mind she was like career opportunities <laughs> clearly grew up in the same house so she knows so good i agree so good but yeah i mean that that's that's my thing with Jennifer Connelly. You know, it's just it's just been a thing for as long as I can remember. Not so much. I'm not watching like Snowpiercer right now or anything like that. But yeah. No, you Jonathan know, I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about him. I forgot like he was a thing. <laughs> the guy who is in every movie that you never know who he is. You're Correct. Like, you never guy. you never know That's the name. Him. You just recognize him and everything. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know if anyone in the chat has an unpopular opinion they want to share, but yeah, that's pretty much our episode for today. Um, we are streaming a couple things cool. coming up. I know Friday, unfortunately, you won't be a part of this. We are doing Among Us again at 3 p.m. our time, Eastern yes. Standard Time. There's about seven oh, or eight no. of us. If there is jo- a spot, I think I, I just joined it. The opening of the store got pushed back a week, so uh, oh, no, there's I will plenty not of spo- be working. Oh, you're not? Then let's do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I think there's seven or eight of us. Um, we had a full, we had a lobby of thirteen, but at least there's eight definite. So no, there's a spot. I saved you a spot regardless. Put so, me down. Yeah, put we, me down. We'll put you I, down. I, I just freed up. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we'll be streaming Among Us. Uh, like I said, three p.m. on Friday. I know um, Saturday at nine p.m. we are going to do Party Panic again. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't know if that for Hopefully with we'll get Mel madness on that. Madness, yeah, he was sick last time, so it was only me, you, and Mel. But I think the four of us will play that. Um, for those who don't know, Party Panic, it, it's a little bit of a mix of like basically kind of like a Mario Party game, I guess. You can do just straight mini games. You got a board Except game. Except violence. There's a lot yes, of violence. Yes, we game, we could beat the shit out of each other. We did. We punched. We kicked. We dragged. We clawed. Mm-hmm. And it's a silliest, stupid game. But we will be streaming that Saturday at nine. Um. Do you have? You said you might do Resident Evil Eight. Do you have the time for yeah, that yet? I, I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do Resident Evil Eight Friday night at nine o'clock Eastern time. Um, I'm gonna see how how far I can get through it. Um, my Friday opened up, so after we do Among Us, I'll take a break. Um, probably grab something to eat, uh, and then I'll play Resident Evil probably in the nine o'clock hour at some point on Friday and see how fa- how deep I can go and put that one to bed. But I really do want to play. Um, I know we're playing Party Panic or whatever it is. But, um, you know, I mentioned this to you earlier in the week, but I really do want to see if we can get to some Deep Rock Galactic because that game I'm hearing a lot of good things about. It sounds like a fucking blast. Uh, it's a co-op game. Um, I know we've got Dying Light 1 on the docket 2 down the line. We but, got Strange. Yeah, we both got Deep, Rock, we got Deep Rock Galactic for free. Um, and I've heard that it's very, very fun. So hopefully No, we can I've get heard good things about it too. Few. Yeah, once you, I think once you get Resident Evil 8 to bed, and I, you should, I think, I at least you, if you don't do it this next stream or next sitting, you will definitely do it your second one. Either one or two left. Um, but based on when you're, what you got left, um, you're almost done. And yeah, I definitely want to get to Deep Rock, and I do want to get to Strange Brigade. Um, thanks, yes. Taj, for that. Yeah, we are trying something new Thank because Taj. obviously we, we're doing this off the PlayStation, so obviously we don't have a computer to put up cool graphics, but at least it gives you at least something to watch. Um, and who knows, you know, once we see how well this does, and we are going to either put all this on YouTube or, you know, cut it up a little bit. We'll figure that out just so people can kind of watch it. Um, but, yeah, we definitely enjoy doing this. Obviously, we are both meant for live, so, you know, this has been – this kind of worked out better than I thought. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, this is the shit, you know, that we talk about just regardless we get into this. And 
Um, you know, I, I agree. I like this kind of free form uh, kind of idea. Hopefully, we can get more controversial opinions. Um, we'll see. You know, we we got a few in the boat. We got some, you know, some ideas that we can't do till spring or summer because I know we're taking a trip. Um, but yeah, we do have some ideas, and you know, some might be controversial, some might just be fun. Uh, this is just the first one because actually, Taj, this is because of you. I saw you post the unpopular opinion. I'm like, you know what? This is a good idea. We should just do a show nice. all about this. We we're trying to come up with like three topics to do in one show. Like, let's just do a whole show and just bitch about the shit we hate. You know, let's be old men. We um, really are. But thank you all who stayed in the chat, thank you know, you. till the end, who even joined us, you know, previously. This is a blast. Um, I'm glad you can enjoy both of us just bitching about our unpopular opinions. And I know we have more. And who knows, we might bring it back for a segment somewhere down the road. Um, <laughs> yeah. But awesome. thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciated. And basically, have a good day. Keep on gaming. Thanks, everyone.